Well, hello everybody, the History Guy here, ready to take on a new challenge on Millennium Dawn, which is a modern day mod for Hearts of Iron 4. And I thought that in lieu of just trying to conquer as much of the world as possible, I'd take on some very specific and unique challenges. And one of them that was suggested to me that I'm going to go ahead and take on is to reform the Byzantine Empire which of course was the Eastern Roman Empire and uh, at their greatest extent for most of their history the Byzantine Empire took up uh, a lot of uh, the very northern edge of Africa what today would be Israel parts of Jordan Syria Turkey Greece uh, Italy and some of the Balkan states and so that is my goal today is to begin that process so this is not going to be a long series and I'm not going to show all the details of what I do, but I will show the highlights along the way. I'm going to start as the nation of Greece and from Greece recreate as much of the Byzantine Empire as possible. So that's going to be a real challenge, I think, starting as a small nation and, of course, having to take out nations such as Turkey and Italy, which are part of NATO. Uh, but we're going to see what we can do. So I'm going to play on normal difficulty and we're going to dive in to the recreation of the Byzantine Empire in Millennium Dawn. All right, so right off the bat, we see that unlike a lot of other countries in Millennium Dawn, Greece does not have a unique focus tree. So it's got the generic uh, Millennium Dawn focus tree. Now, there's still a lot available for that, uh, but it doesn't give me kind of the ability to do things like I could on other ones. So the biggest thing right off the bat before I ever go to war with anybody is I've got to build up my economy, build up my ability to produce um, and make war. I have very little manpower uh, because I don't have a large population. Greece is not a big country, so uh, we're going to have to start changing some of that. We're going to have to have a small but effective fighting force. Uh, I have a decent sized army, it would appear. Uh, let's take a look. I've got 29 divisions, which is not bad for an army the size of the one that I have, or for a country the size of the one that I have. And I think for now, we're just going to go ahead and have a garrison area as far as my army goes because I'm not going to go to war anytime soon so there's not a lot that I really need to do with any of that uh, so that'll allow me to just keep that size right off the bat we're going to start ramping up the number of civilian factories that we're building uh, and I'm going to try to in the process also work on research and uh, spending of my political power that's going to allow me to reduce how long it takes to construct those factories. I've only got four available civilian factories, and that's before I do any kind of trade for anything that I need. I'm obviously not really gonna be able to build an army. Uh, so what I'll have to do in lieu of that is just stockpile weapons until I'm ready to start building up an army. So very limited in the beginning. This is definitely gonna be one of the more challenging things that I've ever done on Millennium Dawn. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. I think I'm going to go political focus right off the bat because that does eventually open up some things like extra research slots, international alliances. Uh, but I want to also look at where I can build up my industry because there's got to be a place for that as well. And it's all the OK, all, actually over here, industrial focus. We're going to start there and work our way down and we're going to not really focus on the military at all completely focus on what's going to allow me to build up my industry and build up my ability to eventually produce on a large scale of course i'm going to need manpower for that but um here's construction speed 10 percent, so that'll be helpful again not really going to do anything I, I might just do one on land doctrine uh, just because I could use that and I'm going to primarily go with armor so we're going to go mobile warf warfare there. And encryption decryption that doesn't really matter a whole lot for me right now but eventually I'll be able to open up this research time reduction so we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, we do have some free dockyards. Let me see as far as trade goes. What am I pro I'm not producing anything. Gr Greece like Greece has nothing. This is going to be nuts. It's going to take me years, maybe decades, before I can even get into a position 
where I can begin to try and take on some of these countries I'm going to need. But I'm looking at you, Romania. you got a lot of steel, and you've got some oil, and I could very much use that. I'm literally producing nothing. I'm producing one oil, five aluminum, and four steel. Greece, no wonder your economy's in shambles. All right, let's dive into this, and let's see what we can make happen. All right, so my first national focus is complete. And as I'm thinking about this, rather than continuing down and only gaining one civilian factory at a time, which is all I'm going to get from all of these, I'm thinking of ways to make a bigger splash sooner. And one of those things is to switch over to monarchy, which I'm going to need if I'm going to be the Byzantine Empire anyway, because that's going to allow me to make changes more rapidly within, um, within my government policy that will allow me uh, to improve things. So for example, uh, switching from a civilian economy to even early mobilization, which I will need to be monarchist to do, uh, because civilian economy, I'm taking a 70% hit to civilian and military factory construction speed. So that's, that's just brutal for me right now when I have next to no factories. So that I think will help me faster than just every 70 days building one additional factory. So uh, we'll go that route, but it's going to be, like I said, it's it's literally going to be years before I'm able to do anything at all. There's Vladimir Putin being elected president of Russia. I do have a decent sized navy as I'm looking. I've got, looks like 37 ships available to me. So unfortunately, that's not going to help me a whole lot, at least not early on, but eventually it'll give me control of the Mediterranean, which will be important moving forward. A uh, long way off yet from any kind of research, and none of these researches, researches are going to particularly help me in any great ways either. So right now I've only got three factories working, and it's going to take them all the way until June of 2002 to even complete one civilian factory. All right, so Switzerland has joined the United Nations, and we've completed ideolo ideology focus, which now we're going to start a national strength. That's our next step toward monarchy we do now have enough points to at least make some changes to the government uh, it looks like if i left the european union i'd be gaining uh, quite a bit of political power uh, so that might be an option uh, that i might have to consider here because i don't know that there's a lot of benefit for me being in the eu at this point um, stability is hurting me national strength of course is hurting me so let's start looking at political advisors and look for one that's going to allow us to uh, get some great benefit. Civilian factory construction speed, that would definitely be a benefit, uh, as would anything to do with monarchy. So um, there's got to be someone somewhere who is in that neighborhood of things. War industrialist, that doesn't really help me a whole lot right now. So I think for now we'll go with the, the one that's going to help me with the construction, the captain of industry. And then eventually we'll choose one that will help with monarchy as well. So that's going to be a nice little bonus for us right now that we can definitely use. All right, so there's national strength. We'll very soon be getting monarchism. We only got two more uh, things to go here. And once I complete this one, it's going to start the drift toward monarchy. But it's going to drift toward other things too. We'll just have to then specify monarchy after that with the next one. So... At that point, it's just going to be waiting out the time until we can become a monarchy, and then that frees me up to start making some changes. One really frustrating thing here is that I see I'm already on limited conscription, and I have no manpower. So conscription's only going to get me so far with manpower. I'm definitely going to have to find ways to uh, make changes for my population, and part of that's going to have to come probably through lowering taxes, which by doing that is going to hurt my research time but it is going to allow for a greater uh, population bonus and very low taxes will help that even more. There's other things I can do as well for taxes that I'll have to look at at some point, including uh, the regulations. That's gonna make a big, big change. Uh, in fact, much better change than uh, anything else because that's an immigration policy. So open country is gonna cost me 300, but it's gonna get me a 40% month monthly population bonus, which is gonna be key. So now we've been, started researching monarchism, or using for national focus. The House of Glücksburg uh, is actually at 5.61% and rising currently by um, 0 0.03, but that's going to improve dramatically once we complete monarchism. That's going to give me uh, an additional bonus of 0.1. So that's going to start growing much, much faster. 
And then it's a matter of election time, which we're actually going to hit elections here in December. So unfortunately, that's going to happen too soon uh, to to get me into that position now. But hopefully by the time the next elections roll around, we'll be in a better place. There's re really very little I can research right now. So I have moved on to researching some uh, things in the military realm just because I have no other real options at this point. All right, we've completed monarchism. Now empower the monarch is going to automatically change the House of Glucksburg to the ruling party. Uh, so elections are irrelevant at that point. That'll get me to monarchism. That should also be about the time I have enough political power uh, to start making massive changes, especially to my economy. Uh, so that's going to make a big, big change. It's going to allow me to produce civilian factories much faster which is gonna be key for me ramping up to be able to do anything at all. All right, here comes the monarchy. Let's see who takes power. Constantine the second, I even, okay. It doesn't get any better than that, right? I mean, if I'm gonna have the Byzantine empire, I have to have Constantine as, an, as a monarch. So that's phenomenal, I'm very excited by that. Um, Here's the thing. We now are going to choose the values of old, which is going to be key because my stability is terrible. It's at 33%. Uh, values of old is going to give me a weekly stability bonus of 0.2. So every month or so, it's going to go up by about a percent. So it's going to be slow, but we're playing a long game here. So it's eventually going to get better. Now we change to, let's see, early, actually partial mobilization. Now we can't get there. That needs 300. So early mobilization. That's going to be key because it's now going to allow me... Oh, the U.S. expelled us from NATO. First of all, how does the U.S. just to get it to unilaterally do that? And I say that as an American. Um, so since because I have become a monarchy, apparently I'm not fit to be a part of NATO anymore. And that's fine. Prison break. All right. Uh, so we gain, we lose political power, but we gain stability. So yeah, let's do this. So apparently we're also abandoning the EU. So we have basically stepped out on our own. So that's the way it's got to be. That's fine. Um, so we'll get the values of old. And let's take a look and see how quickly now we're able to construct. Uh, so it's moved all the way up to April 17th of 2001. That's about a year faster than it was uh, because of all of the things that we've made the changes for. So uh, there will eventually be more I can do to improve that even more. And of course, with additional civilian factories comes additional uh, speed at which I produce them. So we're very, very slowly crawling out of this deep hole that I'm in as far as uh, my ability to do anything goes. Well, it looks like I'm not the only one. The UK has just left the European Union. We've completed values of old. So that gets all we can really get out of the monarchy tree there. So now we go back over here and we start thinking about political focus, which is going to give me much needed political power. And then, of course, industrial focus. So... Um, I'm just looking down this route here and eventually I can create factions, which is going to be key. But for now, I don't think there's a lot to be gained by going that route. Um, stability is going to be important and there's a lot of different places that I can gain that uh, through some of these things here. But I really think at this point, uh, I may go one uh, internal politics, which I will go political focus, then internal politics, then I'll probably start switching to industry. And I'm thinking about going ahead and declaring war on Bulgaria. Not because Bulgaria has anything to offer me. It doesn't. It doesn't even have any resources. Uh, but it opens the door to Romania, which does have resources. And while I don't have much uh, in terms of industry, I do have a decent sized army for a country as small as mine. So I think I ought to be able to overrun Bulgaria and even Romania when the time comes. So I may go ahead and gobble those two up here in this episode while I simultaneously continue to work on my economy. All right, so all the events of September 2001 have been unfolding. We're gonna switch our immigration policy to lightly regulated. 
There's internal politics, so I've actually got enough to go. Well, very nearly got enough to go the next step to open country. We're not quite there yet. Uh, but that's going to hopefully see an influx of folks. I already have seen uh, a buildup of some manpower uh, because of my changes to my industrial policy. Everybody's leaving the EU right now. We're also currently justifying our war on Bulgaria, and that's going to be complete... I believe sometime early next year, January of 2002. So we're going to be invading, and I think that'll probably be over relatively quickly. Don't expect that to be a long conflict. And we're going to go ahead. Ah, George W. Bush announces Operation Enduring Freedom. U.S. goes to war with Afghanistan. Uh, so here's a bonus uh, for stability and war support. I think that'll probably be helpful. Uh, I'm just looking down the road here. Mobilize the female workforce is going to hurt my monthly population, but improve my factory output dramatically. Uh, so that may be something I have to consider. Um, but for now, civilian industry. All right, so we're about to go to our first war, our first expansion of territory for the future reborn Byzantine Empire. And it begins by invading Bulgaria, which is completely useless to me, but allows me to open the door to Romania, which I do very much want. So here we go. Let's de declare war on Bulgaria. Kingdom of Greece goes to war. Not even going to worry about air power. I don't think I'm going to need it. I think this is pretty much going to be a walk in the park. And it's going to be over just about as quickly as one could hope. As you can see... Not going to take long. Bulgaria has no army to speak of. It uh, looks like I'm going to lose about a thousand men in the process. Alright, what are we waiting on here, folks? Let's finish this off. There we go. Alright, Bulgaria. Thanks for playing. We're going to take all states. Not going to be any puppets. We want to create a Byzantine Empire here. Okay, now, obviously, Romania is going to be a little bit of a tougher nut to crack. Uh, they've got between 11 and 15 divisions, so there still shouldn't be an issue with that. Um, I don't know that Bulgaria had any factories to speak of, but let's take a look and see if it did anything at all for me. Oh, they did actually have a few factories, so maybe two. Uh, so we're going to start queuing up for Romania, and we'll take them out, and I think that'll probably be a good place to stop with this first episode. And it's going to take another six months to get that done. All right, industrial development's complete. We're also going to go to partial mobilization, which is once again going to speed up how quickly I can produce those civilian factories. And now we're going to go civilian industry one, which is going to get me another one. And I, I just want to look real quick at where my spots are, uh, how many slots I have available for new civilian factories. I do have a few slots here in Bulgaria, so that's going to be helpful. Looks like I'm going to want some infrastructure as well uh, before I get too far on that. That's going to definitely help. Uh, another thing infrastructure tends to do is, let's look at our, our resource map mode. Uh, additional infrastructure will improve the amount of resources that we're producing. Now, I have so little in the way of resources that it's going to take a lot to even make any kind of a dent in that. So. There's really not a lot to be gained by doing that. But once I get into Romania, that'll probably change. All right, here we go. It is time to grab some resources that are much, much needed as I finally start to get some civilian factories going as well. Uh, their military should not be a big concern. They've got about fifty to 60,000 men. I outnumber them about three to one. I should also have air superiority. I've got quite a few planes, so uh, we're going to grab Bucharest pretty early in all of this and just try to march through as quickly as we can. I see a couple of divisions of his, but they're just not putting up a fight at all. So the one saving grace I had with Greece was the size of the military, which allows me to do this before I um, have to worry too much about other things. So we lost 516 men. We've taken out 25,000 Romanian troops. And that should just about do it. All right. Awesome. So far, so good. We've got our first resources now. So let's go ahead and, and stop right there. You can see now our budding empire 
is starting to get there. So we've taken Bulgaria, we've taken Romania, and now let's look at the situation. Now we've got eight military factories, four naval dockyards, so that's a lot more than we had to start. Uh, more importantly, I now have uh, available to me 18 civilian factories that are currently working on additional civilian factories. Then on top of that, we now actually have a whole bunch of steel, some of which can be traded away in exchange for additional factory uh, help. Uh, and then we're also going to have a little bit of oil, a little bit of aluminum. So I'm in a much, much better situation economically than I was at the start. Now we can start to focus on getting ready to uh, really do some damage. And I think the next thing really is going to have to be, we're just going to keep gobbling up all of these, all the former Yugoslavian states. And I think once we've done enough of that, if we can get to the place where Turkey's no longer a NATO threat or NATO loses most of its teeth and I can gain some other allies uh, by going and being able to create factions, then we can worry about Turkey uh, or we can use my navy to cross over and take things like Le uh, Libya and Egypt. So let me know your thoughts. Where do you think I should go next as I continue to uh, build up this new Byzantine Empire? Use the comment section below. Please hit that thumbs up if you want to see more from this series and things like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. We will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.